Germany's high tech strategy and the Fraunhofer model is uh, the headline. And uh, I've subdivided the presentation in four points, some remarks about the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft or Fraunhofer Association, uh, global challenges from our view, and Fraunhofer, some uh, few words, and Fraunhofer innovations for added value uh, by, uh, especially added value by industrial production, and some uh, remarks to the conclusion. Here you can see uh, an overview about the German scientific or German uh, the German uh, research landscape or scientific system, and it's very interesting. This is a special in the world. It's a special in the world, and we every country have a similar. But uh, in this uh, strong network, you can only this found in Germany. You can see we have as basic for the system the university. And the university have in the main uh, objective uh, to build the new, uh, to, to educate the new uh, people uh, in teaching and uh, to realize the studies, but study by research, sub, sub, uh, supported by research, also teaching supported by research. This is a backbone of the scientific system. We have in Germany, uh, in general, three different uh, characteristics or uh, the characteristics of three different universities. We have the so-called full universities with law and philosophers and languages and so on. <laughs> then we have the technical universities. And in Germany we have a strong system of technical universities. And we have the so-called applied universities. Uh, in Germany is the, the right word. Fachhochschulen. Uh, the German uh, word Fach means Hochschule with a special branch or special profile, in, uh, not so broad, a special profile. And all together uh, build up the backbone for the scientific system. Then we have for basic research the Max Planck Association for scientific insights. They bring us the Nobel, the Nobel Awards in Germany. Uh, we have the Helmholtz Gemeinschaft for programmatic research, for example, nuclear research or uh, um, in medicine, for epidemiology, for great questions in the medicine, <laughs> and others, also energy. And uh, we have Leibniz. Leibniz uh, is a pool, if you can say, for uh, human research, uh, research in human resources, in in questions for how, how can we develop uh, um, the, the working world in the factories in the future, but not so strong in technologies, more in social questions. <clears throat> and Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer with our mission, application-oriented uh, R&D, innovation push for the economy in Germany, especially the industry and in Europe. And uh, you can, in the colored uh, blue uh, in the green color. If in the green color, you can see the level of uh, innovation uh, of the innovation part in this research. Uh, here now you can see what is Fraunhofer in Germany. Fraunhofer in Germany. Well, that means 66 institutes, 24,000 researchers, a budget of 2.1 billion euros, and the special in comparison to the other organizations. Max Planck have a base funding from more than 90 percent. This was Max Planck, and the, the second one uh, from from uh, from uh, uh, from bottom bottom up uh, have a basic research more than more than 90 percent. Helmholtz more than 70 percent. Every times by state and uh, federal government, and Leibniz also in this area. Fraunhofer, our base funding is 30%, 70%. In our case, 1.7 billion. We have every, every year to uh, secure by acquisition in the, in, the, in the industry and also in the public programs, United Union, uh, European Union, European Union or federal programs or state programs. And this brings a high pressure to the institutes to go to the industry, bring your, bring your ideas, your innovation to the industry. This is 
the precondition for financing the next year. And I think this is one of the keys uh, for the innovation system, for the success in the innovation system in Germany. And uh, how is our financing model by Fraunhofer in general? <coughs> you can see this is a red line. This is a red line. Uh, 30, 33 percent base funding, public projects and industrial contracts. In my institute some years I have had 40 percent with the industry and a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, less uh, base funding in the other year was a, this is a red line. But nobody or no, uh, no institute uh, should a longer time come outside from these windows. Then I look as president and call him when the base funding, uh, when his, uh, his, uh, his base funding uh, uh, represents continuity of scientific excellence. When some years the base funding would go down to 20%, he have not the precondition for excellence by the industry in the next years. This is uh, uh, the system. And uh, very important is also the blue one in the middle, the public projects. These projects are mostly financed 50% by the industry and 50% by federal government, state government, or the uh, European Union. But in this area of projects comes industry with the researchers together. And uh, the risk is not so high. 50% come public money, 50% by, by, uh, by the companies, and you have three, four structural advantages. At first, companies come together to a special big, for, for example, in the automotive industry, I mentioned this in the morning, uh, lightweight construction. There are a lot of basic questions in lightweight construction. Not every company should find a solution for every detail. They come together. The companies come together. Second advantage, uh, the companies and the researchers come together. And the third, the risk for all participants comes down. It's a very, very interesting uh, uh, part here in the middle in this pre-competitive uh, research area. And the last one are the direct uh, projects. And in our case, these are every year uh, a volume of 850 uh, um, million euros. And here you can see on the activities uh, Fraunhofer worldwide. And you can recognize we have a cluster in our international activities in Europe. We have a cluster in our, in our international activities in the United States. And we have this in, uh, in uh, East Asia. And uh, since five years, uh, we have also an increase in our activities in South uh, America. What you can see on the right, in the legend, we have different structures of cooperation in, uh, uh, in of international cooperation of international uh, cooperation we have subsidiaries legal daughters subsidiaries we have centers centers are long term institutes we call it centers for the uh, in germany we have the, we call it institutes uh, uh, for foreign activity centers and we have project centers the project centers are not long term, <coughs> are oriented on, a, on the solution for a special, for a special question with, a, with partners in the country. And on the end comes a decision, we continue or we close it, the work is done. And we have uh, strategic cooperations by an ICON program is financed by uh, our organization. And we have representative offices and senior advisors, as you can see. We have here in uh, uh, Ireland a senior advisor, Professor Jerry Byrne, long friend of mine, uh, scientific colleague in the International Academy for Production Engineering. And Jerry Byrne was also uh, the president of this academy. And uh, uh, it is a pleasure that we could win him for the cooperation here in Ireland, Jerry. And uh, in summary, you can see we have 50 international uh, Fraunhofer activities worldwide and turnover in this from of uh, nearly 280 million 
but you can also see the, subsidi the subsidiaries have, also, have only nearly uh, 30 million. The so most projects are realized by the institutes in Germany together with uh, the others. And here you uh, get a little bit an insight in our inner structure by Fraunhofer. The 66 Institute uh, must be a little bit structured uh, in, uh, from different reasons. And um, you can see we have information and communicate. We have an, an so-called groups or alliances uh, for information and communication technologies. There are 17 institutes, life sciences, seven institutes, uh, light and surfaces, six microelectronics, 11, 11, 11 production, uh, seven, and uh, materials, 14. And we have also a part for defense and security of seven members. This is a long tradition. When a long tradition, when Fraunhofer was founded, uh, 67 years before, uh, there was the organization founded, but there was no institutes. And uh, after the World War II, uh, was a decision. Some institutes from the defense research was, uh, uh, let me say, the, the basic, the, the start uh, to development Fraunhofer. And uh, from this, we have also a responsibility until to, uh, today, in the, in the most cases, material science and uh, uh, for uh, communication technologies. Now some words to global challenges. Uh, the most global challenge from our view is the demographic change. Climate and resources are a follow of uh, the uh, demographic change. And uh, in this triangle, we have to find solutions and the digitalization over, uh, overlaid all the other uh, global challenges. And uh, as you know, we have, uh, I have, uh, uh, I uh, uh, pick out here one of the uh, challenges, and here you can see the uh, resource uh, problematic, and uh, I, uh, we uh, selected the year 2050 because in 2048, uh, we are on the end with our oil, uh, with our crude oil from the few today. When we continue our activities without efficiency and when we, when we not find new resources uh, uh, in the next years. And uh, very important is on the right, uh, in, the, in the right box, uh, we have and this is important for the strategy also for countries. Should we give strategy in, uh, in services, in industrial production? Uh, the demographic development leads us to the need that we have to realize more productions worldwide that we can keep the people in peace. Uh, a lot of uh, conflicts which we have worldwide come from the needs to, to values, to products, uh, uh, to clothes, to cars, uh, all, all the uh, things what we need. And uh, our, uh, our calculation is today we are 7.5 billion people, but only 1.5 until 2 billion people have a level of uh, life quality like we here in the room. Only for the people which we have, we have to, uh, to uh, f we have four times or three, four, uh, five times uh, to uh, increase the production uh, volume. And uh, in 2050, we will be nine billion. And uh, the challenge is we have nearly the six fold uh, growth of added value. By less, by much less, uh, or much fewer uh, using of resources. What are in, in, in detail the challenges we need uh, following the uh, demographic change? We need products for what I mentioned. We need products for more people. We need simple products with high effects. 
we need cheap products with uh, also uh, suitable uh, uh, characteristics, but we need also for an aging population, for aging for the aging population in the industrial nations, total new products. For example, function integration. We have uh, developed, for example, an uh, what has Tanshu, Sophie? A glove. We have we have developed. Excuse me. We have developed uh, developed a glove. In this case, not the hand moves the glove. The glove moves the hand. For for therapy, when you, if you have uh, had an uh, operation or other things, and uh, but also for support in production technologies, you can more uh, you can bring more forces uh, for uh, different. Uh, uh, Working processes, emission neutrality for climate protection through uh, closed uh, loops in production technologies, big data for competitiveness. Uh, I have some uh, slides for this and uh, ICT, uh, ICT security uh, through integrated dynamic concepts. In general, we can say, and I think, especially in such a honorable uh, round like uh, this uh, persons here today. Is this uh, a very, very uh, important, uh, essential message for the for the for the society in general? We need a new, para we need a paradigm change. We need a new paradigm. Yesterday was maximum profit with minimal capital investment. Today is 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 maximum profit with minimal capital Say every times, but also by enough profit that we can invest in new technologies, technologies to realize this uh, uh, paradigm change. We don't for, we uh, uh, don't forget this, and uh, uh, ways for uh, to arrive this uh, objective. You can see in green cities, resource efficiency, closed loops, sustainable production. Production. When I see here green cities. And I look to Ireland. Uh, it's also a very interesting effect. In Germany, we have had in the last years great projects to mega cities. Great projects to mega cities. The challenges during the mega cities, mega cities in India, in China. Sometimes I asked in uh, public discussions, and for which mega cities in Germany use we this money? Oh, and a lot of people. At first, the Bavarians said we have also to realize to create new high-level jobs based on the new uh, possibilities by IT technology in the in the land, also in the, on the, by which we're talking, in, in rural areas, for example. This is also a question. In Germany, we have um, uh, Sophie knows the, 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 the numbers. In Germany, we have. Uh, seven, seventeen, and the millions. Fifty-six. Fifty-six. We have fifty-six million of the people. We are we are eighty. We are eighty million people in Germany. Fifty-six live in cities smaller than one hundred thousand people. We have only four million cities: Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, and Cologne. Cologne. So, and then some with five hundred. My hometown is Dresden. Five hundred. Dresden, Leipzig. Uh, uh, Frankfurt, five, six hundred, and the, the, and we need new technologies also for the for the land areas, and I think this is also a strategic point in in in, in Ireland. We have only you have only also not only the people in Dublin, also we have also here uh, similar similar uh, challenges. Con some concrete remarks to Fraunhofer areas of, re uh, of research. Uh, great topics in our research work are health and environment, <coughs> communication and information, production and services, mobility and transportation, energy and resources, and safety and security. Uh, you can uh, under the line uh, see what are special topics. Uh, for communication and information areas, you can see here internet access for rural areas, for example, is such a uh, is such a topic, or uh, efficiency water pro water projects are also beside the industrial uh, projects. Water projects is very interesting. There come a new project together with South Africa, 
also for the German industry, that we realize new products like a, a, a washing machine. Washing machine? Wash machine? For closing washing machine. Uh, we want with South Africa together uh, to produce new components for a washing machine for the, for the water, for the drinking water in the houses. Uh, because there are a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, health problems by not clean water. And we, we bring cleaning machine, like, like a washing machine uh, at the home for every house, and you have clean water and have, uh, we, we have not more the problems with the health. Germany has a high-tech strategy. This is also a sim, I think this is a singularity uh, between the countries in Europe. The French people, the French government, uh, have had a consulting with our uh, um, department leader, Mrs. Wanka, uh, and uh, leading persons from the research organizations in Germany. France have also in, uh, France want also to design a national strategy for a national high-tech strategy. What is the background? In Germany, every company has a high-tech strategy, the so smaller and also especially uh, the larger companies. But we have two institutions in Germany where we bound the topics and uh, the priorities. One institution is the so-called uh, innovation dialogue by the Chancellor, Angela Merkel. We are 20, 20 persons. From the, from the science, uh, the president of uh, Max Planck and uh, myself from Fraunhofer, then leaders from BMW, Bosch, but also from medium and small companies, also uh, medium small companies, and then from the, from the government. And we are in a discussion, every time prepared by the industry and by science to special topics, where we have the chance, the chancellor, the, uh, the Minister of Economics, Gabriel, and also the Minister of Science, Mrs. Wanka, to present our view of the to-do list, so of the high-level to-do list, to bring the country, not only a different company, to bring the country in innovation strategy uh, ahead. And uh, the, second, uh, the second institution which we have is uh, Germany's high-tech forum, forum, high-tech forum, and in the high-tech forum, we discuss the high-tech strategy. This is leaded by Prof uh, Mr. Barner, is the head of uh, uh, Böhringer Ingelheim and myself. And in this chart, you can see what are our topics. Do we what topics we have today in discussion to push in Germany this in the high-tech strategy. And when we, when we concentrate and when we, after a long and strong discussion process have uh, focused from this area or from this overview three or five topics. Then we offer the uh, general, the federal uh, government, to organize a program, a program, a support program for research, not only for the not only for the research institutions and for the universities, for both. Also, the, the, the economics, also the industry and, and the economic uh, enterprises get here a support from the government. And uh, as you can see here, is a wide range. And uh, to this, with uh, in the red box, I can give, if you want, some uh, remarks more. Is my time over, Mr. President? I think you're doing very well, thank you. Okay, <laughs> then some remarks to this. You can see here, we have... Uh, uh, Fraunhofer, we have so-called co so profiling uh, lighthouse projects, and uh, on one hand, a, gr a great uh, topic in Germany will be driven by Fraunhofer, the, the development of so-called terranostic implants, that means implants which have the functionality of diagnostic, what has happened in the joint, and of therapy, both. Uh, the second is electromobility. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a good level today in Germany. You must see, in Japan, get you, I think, 10,000 or 15,000 euros if you buy a new electrical car. In South Korea also, not so much. In, I think in, 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 in Norway also. In Germany, 
you get nothing. You get nothing. But we have also nearly one million cars. Uh, it's our goal, 2020, one million cars on the, on the roads. But it's not a problem from my side. I think uh, we come to this. Uh, rare earth metals is also a very, very uh, important uh, thing because electromobility, electromobility without access to rare earth will be a dream, not more. And E3 production, E3 production, uh, that means the 3E efficiency in production technology, emission free or emission neutrality in production technology, and the third E is uh, integration of the humans, ergo ergonomy, ergonomy integrating of the, the humans in the production technology. This is an international project uh, uh, escorted by the International Academy of uh, Production Engineering and uh, Jerry Byrne here from Ireland is one uh, of the evaluators of uh, uh, this project. And uh, one of the important initiatives also by the national high-tech strategy and also from our side, from Fraunhofer, is uh, only, this pro only this project I lead self at the present time. And uh, this is the initiative Industrial Data Space. And the background is, you, during the lunch, we spoke about Industry 4.0. And uh, if you want to realize Industry 4.0, you need different pre-discussion, uh, pre, uh, uh, pre-conditions. Thank you. Uh, you need different pre-conditions. And uh, data velocity, also. Latency, latency, latency. You need uh, data security. Nobody from the medium and small uh, companies give her over a long year's term by hard work generated IP in the cloud. Nobody will do it. But by uh, special security, uh, is this possible? And the third uh, precondition between the velocity and the security are the standards. And for the standards, we have now in Germany, <laughs> together with uh, uh, the European Union, a solution. This, this solution is driven by the industry. The security solution is driven by Fraunhofer, together with the industry, the standards by the industry, and uh, the velocity and the bright band, the bright, uh, the bright uh, band uh, networks are uh, infrastructural uh, challenge for the government. And this is in Germany a real problem. In, 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 uh, in, in, bright, in, in Breitband uh, networks and in latency, uh, latency side and latency, time for latency, if we call us from here to, from my, from my mouse, uh, when, I mean, I, if I spoke to the other people, we have today 40 milli milliseconds 40 milliseconds when we call uh, from my speak bis to the, uh, bis, uh, uh, um, until uh, you, we have uh, for 30, 40 milliseconds for industrial processes for industry 4.0. We need 0 0.1 milliseconds, well, dramatically down. And before we have not solutions for these three preconditions, will industry 4.0 be self a cloud? Uh, our solution for security is that we not prefer a cloud as a server outside in other country or also outside from Europe in a country. We prefer a solution uh, as a network, not a new physical network. We use the networks and we use the clouds, the servers in the industrial uh, partners, enterprises, which take part in the network. But we, Fraunhofer, realize uh, uh, at the present time a software which generates the, secure, the, data secu the data security in this network. And uh, we have a lot of companies which work here together. It's very interesting. Here are involved the automotive industry, the supplier industry, the steel industry, the chemical industry, the insurance uh, economy. The German, German Bahn, uh, the German Railways, uh, 
chemical industry I have mentioned, is a, a big run, and we are together with the European Union that we transfer this in the, uh, uh, with Mr. Oettinger and a lot of uh, other guys in uh, French and uh, companies from France and also from uh, uh, Netherlands are as first involved. And my last chart, I think here you can see, for example, is this was IT technology. There are a lot more challenges. Here uh, for energy, and this is a very nice example for a solution for three problems. First problem, we have in the follow of uh, renewable energies, especially by sun, solar energy, and by wind, a volatile, volatile uh, level, volatile level by the energy, um, uh, uh, by the energy verfügbarkeit, uh, energy generation. In Germany, we have, I cannot say how is the situation in Ireland, in Germany, we have not only the question that this volatile, uh, volatility, uh, volatility in this energy, uh, not only, you can not only get the energy for nothing, today the companies pay that you take the overhanging energy volume. And this is a problem. The volatility, the volatility, English word for volatility. The volatility, the volatility. I have 13 years learned Russian. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, any, have everybody an idea why? <laughs> and uh, uh, this is the first problem. This is energy by volatility. The second problem is, especially for energy by fossil, uh, capacities, or f especially also for, for steel production. They produce carbon dioxide. Today is our idea, carbon dioxide, <coughs> we, we, we capture the carbon dioxide and we uh, uh, bring it down in there, and nobody will have it under his garden. And uh, there is a solution. Oh, and this, this is the second problem. And the third problem is uh, analysis uh, also from our uh, association show that we get in 10, 15 years problems uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, Kohlenstoff, with carbon, with carbon as a resource, with carbon as resource, clear carbon as resource for medicine industry, for pharma industry, for lightweight constructions, for uh, 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 carbon fiber constructions, and a lot of others. And uh, now is the idea. When we is, is, it is possible by a photosynthetic process or by an electrochemical process a conver to realize a conversation of carbon dioxide back to carbon and water if you give a lot of energy as input. When this energy comes from a process energy generation which produced carbon dioxide, it is no solution. When this energy comes from the overhanging energy by sustainable energy, this could be a solution. And now uh, we have here a great project in North Rhine-Westphalia, ThyssenKrupp, as producer of carbon dioxide, uh, RWE, also RWE, a great German uh, energy uh, company, a lot of smaller companies, there are, there are a lot of possibilities for new uh, business models for small companies, and Fraunhofer and Max Planck, we together, mm -hmm. Uh, said we want to scale up this process to use it in the future in the industry. The question is only to store only a storage of the overhanging energy from uh, sustainable uh, 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 energy uh, production. It was not uh, the only way. We can also use other storages for the energy. For example, when we come a little bit uh, uh, ahead with our 
uh, cell production for, uh, for uh, decentral, uh, for example, in the cars. But we need in the future also steel. I mentioned we have to we have to produce six times more worldwide products in the future when we want to keep the people at home feeling well so, so, so in, in, in an ecosystem what is very very good and we need steel when we need steel we produce carbon dioxide but when we produce carbon dioxide we can this energy from sustainable energy use and we bring it in uh, carbon and uh, uh, I have forgot and on the end with this carbon with this uh, clear carbon you can then go two ways one way we use the carbon for pharma industry chemical industry uh, and uh, lightweight construction the other way we transfer the carbon in synthetic oil yeah. synthetic crude oil and use it for electromobility. And then we have from carbon dioxide, green electromobility. As this is not uh, 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 a bad idea. And on this we work very, very strong. Very, very strong. So, conclusion. Fraunhofer's motivation is more relevant than ever. Why is Fraunhofer the patron of our institution? Fraunhofer was a researcher on one hand. He uh, was the inventor of the black Fraunhofer lines in the spectral colors. And uh, on the other hand, he was an entrepreneur. He built up uh, uh, Lenses. A telescope. He built up telescope. One of his famous customers was Peter the Great from Russia. He visited him personally in uh, Bavaria, in a, in, 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 in a, in a, in, in a old uh, in a cloister, in, 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 a, in, 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 a, in a monastery, and he, uh, Peter the Great would say, how is this with my uh, telescope? And this was this. And uh, Fraunhofer said, every time, whatever we do, we have to be, we have to make a break, think a about over, uh, think about our mission, our objectives, and come back to our uh, core, to our core focus and our core objectives. It's very, very important. <coughs> Mostly, especially in research, we go step by step. We found a, no, a, a new question here, a new question, and all things uh, go in the in the wide range. We have to focus. When we focus, we have success. Thank you very much. Thank you.